recently been watching a lot of other people's bookshelf tours so I thought why don't I make my own I don't know if any of you care about seeing what's on my bookshelf but um, you're gonna see what's on it nonetheless first on the agenda I have two shelves in my bookshelf I think you can only see the top shelf at the moment but the way that I organize my shelves sorry I'm out of breath I just ran up the stairs um, the way that I organize my shelves is this top shelf is all books that I own and then the bottom shelf is books that I am borrowing from other people. Right here in this corner we have two cookbooks which I will not get into because they're cookbooks and you know. next to that I have Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to pronounce his last name but he's the guy that wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Um, this is one of the books that I am borrowing from a friend. Then, next up in line, we have three poetry books. The entirety of my poetry collection, except for one other book that's a little bit further down the line. My shamefully small poetry collection. First, we have I Would Leave Me If I Could by Halsey. I have read, I have read all three of these poetry books, just by the way. Um, I read this one and I kind of enjoyed it. There were some poems that I didn't like as much, but I don't think there's a poetry book in existence where you would read it and like every single poem in it, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave it at that. Otherwise I, I enjoyed this and I really like her style of writing, which is one of the things that stood out to me while I was reading this book. It's, she has a very interesting writing style. The next book is Alone Together by Jake Wagner. It's like Wagner, but there's an N before the G as well, so I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. His last name. He. This is actually a poetry and photo book. It's more a photo book than it is a poetry collection, but he's a, pho uh, a photographer who I follow on Instagram. I will leave his Instagram profile in the description below because I really like his photography. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought the book. He writes poetry as well, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed his poems. There are not a, a lot of them in here. It's mostly just his photography, but the pose, the the pose, <laughs> the poems that he did put in his book, I quite enjoyed. This is actually one of my favorite pages. And one day when I have a coffee table to display this on, this will be on my coffee table displayed, and I will flip to a different page every day. Then, next up, we have Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill. This is the only Nikita Gill book I own, and I want to buy more of her books, because this is the first one that I bought, and I can truthfully and honestly tell you that it was because it is involving Greek mythology and because the cover was intriguing. I thoroughly enjoyed this book, hence why I want to buy more of her poetry books. Then next to that we have a German book, which is the only German book I own. And above that we have The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is another book that I'm borrowing from the same friend that I'm borrowing this book from. Um, I read this book a long time ago actually and just have not given in the book back to my friend. Underneath The Seven Deaths we have Atlantis by David Gibbons. I bought this book, Atlantis, with this labyrinth book by Kate Moss. I bought these two books together at a flea market quite a while ago as well, <laughs> but I bought them together because I thought they their covers go well together. They look nice together. Then next to that we have The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. This was a gift to me on my birthday from a friend. Next up we have The Prince of Mist by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. I have I have read this book and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is kind of a, I think, teen fiction slash young adult book. I really enjoyed it. I have since read one of his other books, which was The Labyrinth of Spirits, and I also really enjoyed that book. It took me a lot longer to read because it's 800 pages long, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And I highly recommend that you read this book 
Next up we have Vox by Christina Delcher. Delcher? Delcher? I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Everyone and their mother was raving about this book a few years ago, so I bought it, but I haven't read it since. <laughs> then next to that we have Seven Seconds by Jack Henderson. I bought this book for my dad, I think as a Christmas present at some point, but now I am borrowing it from him again because I thought it was an interesting, or it sounded like an interesting story, so I wanted to read it myself. Then next to that we have these two very skinny books. The first is 73 Poems by E.E. E. Cummings. This is my favourite poetry book that I own, and my favourite poet. And then next to that we have Four Quartets by T.S. Eliot, which I believe is a collection of four of his, four of his short stories, I think. Next up we have The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. This book trilogy took up the majority of my young, my early adolescent years. Um, I think I read them when I was around 13 or 14 years old, and I really enjoyed them. Next to that, we have Pegasus and the Flame by Kate O'Hearn. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation of her surname, but I hope it is. Then, next up, we have 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. The book that rocked the world a couple of years ago. Um, or not the book, well yes, the book and the series. But I enjoyed the series more than I enjoyed the book. Next up, we have The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. This is one of my favourite books of all time. I really, really enjoyed this book. It was just fantastic. The movie, however, I have some thoughts on. I didn't enjoy the movie as much as the book, but I will not get into that at this very, very second. Then, above these books, we have Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. As soon as I finish the book that I'm currently reading, I will start reading that one, because I have wanted to read it for... since it came out. <laughs> Which was not too long ago. But, different angle, who would have thought? <laughs> Okay, moving on to this side of my bookshelf. Starting off, we have Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, which is, again, everyone and their mom was raving about this book. So, you know, I just had to buy it. Um, then we have Women Who Run With Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. I hope I pronounced that right. Which was given to me for my 21st birthday. Then next up we have The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and Everything is Fucked by Mark Manson. I have read both of these books and I enjoyed them both. Then we have Z <laughs> 101 Ways to Go Zero Waste by Catherine Kellogg. Every time I read this woman's name I have a little giggle to myself because it's like Kellogg's, the serial. I thought I was breaking my book. Then next up we have Quiet Power by Susan Cain, which is... Um, a book for introverts, because I'm an introvert. <laughs> Next up, we have one of my favourite covers in this whole library of mine. Brief Answers to the Big Questions by Stephen Hawking. Rest in peace. <laughs> I saw this book, I think on Pinterest, with this specific cover on it, and the cover grab grabbed my attention before anything else did, so, you know, um, they, they say to not judge a book by its cover, but uh, in this case I, I did judge the book by its cover. Next up, let's start with this book on, on the top here. Crank by Ellen Hopkins. As you can see, there are some sticky note tags here in this book. This is my favourite book on my bookshelf. It's uh, not only a really good story, but it's written. She writes in a very interesting way. Like It looks like it's poems, but it's all one cohesive story. Then we have The Susan Effect, which was also given to me on my 21st birthday. It is a sort of sci-fi book, from what I can tell. It seems like an interesting book, and if you're into the sci-fi kind of crime thriller world, I imagine that you would enjoy this book. I have also, again, not read it yet, but from what I have read on the back, it sounds really interesting. Then, next up, we have Post Truth. Um, this book I bought at the same time, I bought the Stephen Hawking book and Big Magic. This one grabbed my attention. What else can I say? It sounded like an interesting read to read now. It is about, po well, I mean, it's called Post-Truth, so you can imagine what it's about. Why we have reached peak bullshit and what you can do about it. 
or what we can do about it. Then we move on to Blood Print by Ausma Zernat Khan. Oh, this one has a, a map in the front. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Sounds ominous. Next up we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I have read this book and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I read this book two years ago and it was one of the best books I read in that year. It was probably one of the only books I read in that year, but um, I really enjoyed it. Now moving on to the second last book on this bookshelf. We are getting there, peeps. The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. Oh, this is a prequel. I thought it was a sequel. This is, it says, the long-awaited prequel to Practical Magic. Practical Magic was, I guess, the first book she published? I wonder if Practical Magic, the movie, is made from the book. Hmm. Interesting. The last book on my bookshelf, or at least this bookshelf, is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Or if you were German, you would say Erin Morgenstern because it is, in fact, a German surname. I bought this book at a second-hand bookshop slash kind of theater place. The guy who owned the, 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 the place had a theater there where he did performances and then he had second-hand books in another room. And when I bought this book from him, he said that this, was one of, this is one of his favorite books that he's ever read. So it comes with high praise with high expectations, but when I read the back, or not the back, the, you know, the synopsis, which I guess would be, yeah, in the front here, um, it sounded really interesting to me, so I thought I'd buy it. Look at that. How beautiful. I don't really know how I'm going to do this, since this is um, quite close to the floor, but I think I'll just have to kneel here. <laughs> You'll just see my head in frame. The first book on this bookshelf is Ellen DeGeneres' book, Seriously, I'm Killing. I'm Killing? Wow. I'm kidding. <laughs> Seriously, I'm kidding. This book is the first Dan Brown book I ever read, and the only Dan Brown I've ever read. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people have heard of this book because everybody knows The Da Vinci Code and that trilogy of books, and that's pretty much all they know. But this one is Digital Fortress, and I must tell you, it was very good. The Oregon Experiment, which is the third book in a trilogy of books, but I will not be reading the other two books because they are about this thick, and I don't want to read them. The Oregon Experiment is the third in a series of books which describe an entirely new attitude to architecture and planning. The books are intended to provide a complete working alternative to our present ideas about architecture, building and planning, an alternative which will, we hope, gradually replace current ideas and practices. On the top we will show you these. We have Golden Ratio by Mario Livio, which is basically about the patterns that happen in nature and in the rest of our lives as well. Then next up we have a beautifully leather bound book. Oh, it's falling apart. Okay, so not so beautifully bound, but it's very old. Um, the Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. I know everybody knows her book Rebecca. Um, I do want to read that one at some point in time, but I don't have it, so I can't read it. So I thought I'd read The Scapegoat in until I have the other book. Next up we have London Boulevard by Kent Bruin. And next up we have Curation. The power of selection in a world of excess. So basically, kind of like essentialism or minimalism. Don't fall over books, please. I am interested in minimalism and essentialism. Whoops, sorry, essentialism. So I thought I'd read this book. It seemed interesting and the cover is cool. Next up we have Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. The story of success. Um, basically about the people who are at the top of the top and why they are not the norm, I'm assuming, I guess, <laughs> from what I've read on the back and the, the the title of the book. But I have read this book by Malcolm Gladwell, which is Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking. This was a really good book to read, really interesting. Then we have The Last Exit to Brooklyn by Hubert Selby Jr., which I think is a 
green clay sort of oh no never mind it looks like it's just a regular old book which was made into a movie and I haven't seen the movie but I do want to and um, I thought I'd read the book before I, I watched the movie next up we have David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> you'd think I'm a Malcolm Gladwell fan underdogs misfits and the art of battling giants I think that says it all. Moving on, we have The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. I never know how to say people's surnames and I feel so bad. Um, the Alchemist, yes. Everyone and their mom has read this and spoken about it and loved it. I have not read this book yet. I read one of his other books, which was published last year, called The Archer, which was a fantastic book. And you should all go and read it. So I wanted to read The Alchemist because I read his other book and I enjoyed it. And mostly because everybody else said it was a fantastic book. So I thought, you know, why don't I give it a try? Here we have classics. So we have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which everybody knows about Jane Eyre. Do I need to even explain? I haven't read it yet, but I do want to. Um, and then we also have Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Do I have to say more? <laughs> Everybody knows about Far From the Madding Crowd. I haven't read it yet, but I do want to. I tried to read Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, but I just couldn't get into it, so I didn't finish reading it. I'm sorry to any Dickens fans out there, if I have offended you. It's just not for me. Then we have Celebrities and Other Bears by Phyllis DeMong. Then I have Ringworld by Larry Niven, which is, I think, a sci-fi book. I don't really know much about it, but it seemed interesting. Next up we have, would you look at it, Dune by Frank Herbert. I'm only reading this book because they have made a, a movie out of it and everybody was talking about the book, how good it was, so I thought I'd read the book. We have two books that go together. The first of them is The Sunburnt Queen by Hazel Crampton. I, d I didn't actually plan on reading this book, but I saw the second book and then my dad told me that it's actually the second book in a series, so I had to read the first book first, and you know, this is the book that I saw. The side... Oh, actually, I only saw the title, and the title intrigued me. So it's called The Side of the Sun at Noon, and doesn't that just sound interesting? Last up, we have The Lost Symbol by Dan Brown. As I said, that was the Digital Fortress was the first of his books that I read. And I enjoyed it, so I thought I would read another one of his books. So there you have it. A mostly chaotic tour of my bookshelf. I forgot to mention. One last thing. <laughs> Here's the way where the chaotic comes in. This is the book I'm currently reading. It's called The News by Alain de Botton. It's about the news <laughs> and how detrimental it actually is to our mental health and us as a human species. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and you want to see more book related videos and more vlogs <laughs> and uh, if you want to see me change my life in a year, consider subscribing. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in my very next video. And just as I finish making this video, I go out and I buy six more books. So we have Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple, Marion Keith, Rachel's Holiday, Black Dog Summer by Miranda S Sherry, sorry, The Intuitionist by Colson Whitehead, The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes, and Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane. How great.